Hey everybody, if you don't know Wes, uh, Wes, he's known as Black Hills Builds on Instagram. I've shown off his 80 series in uh, a past walk around video, maybe last year, the year before, I can't remember. Uh, first of all, the 80 is way different than when I did that walk around, so go check out his Instagram because it's an absolutely insane vehicle. Everybody knows it in the off-road world at this point. Uh, but we're gonna talk a little bit about his off-road trailer today. And uh, I pulled it out with my 4Runner just because he's kind of in a vehicle shift right now. And with the 80 being in the shop, we didn't have an easy way to get it out here. So I hooked it up to the 4Runner. But yeah, Wes, is there anything you wanna kind of share or just yeah, kind of intro it? I haven't had it for quite a year yet. I picked it up um, last spring or excuse me, last fall, right before winter. Um, and yeah, we've camped, gosh, I don't know, eight nights total in it so far. We'll do a lot more this summer, but my experience with it so far is that it's awesome. I don't know if any of you guys have experience with off-road based trailers or travel trailers, but there's a ton of them out there. They're all very different in their construction and the features. So I'm excited to show you guys what Teardrops NW has to offer. Cool. Yeah. And just to kind of give the, so you, you're married. How many? You've got how many kids? Like what ages are three they? Three kids. We have a six-year-old daughter, um, a son that'll be three in like a week, and then a daughter that'll be two in July. So okay. one little, little one. That's why you'll see a rooftop tent up top. The idea is we sleep in the cab and hopefully at least the two older kids will sleep up top so we have more space. But cool. it's a good way to have something that's like camp ready. So right. for us, we're right here in the Black Hills. We can just use our vehicles like normal vehicles and have the trailer set up to camp. And when we're ready to take off on a Saturday or a Friday afternoon, hook up to it, grab some food, and then we're off camping, we're ready to roll. That's so awesome. that's what's really nice. Cool, all right, yeah. So well, he's gonna walk us around some of these features kind of starting with the exterior. So let's check it out. Sweet. All right, guys, so we're out in front of the trailer. Let's start and take a look at the tongue and what's going on up front. So Teardrops NW uses this really cool CU off-road hitch, which comes directly from Australia. Um, the part on the tongue of the trailer can rotate 360 degrees in one plane, and then the hitch itself can rotate 360 degrees in a second plane. So theoretically, off camber, any situation, you should be able to go on some pretty crazy pitches and not have a problem. It's not gonna like break like a normal ball hitch would and send the trailer rolling. So you get a lot of off camber, which is great for an off-road trailer like this. So the trailer stand itself for the wheels up front, 360 degree rotation, super beefy. So there's dual wheels, which means if you're on dirt or in a crazy environment, it can actually roll around pretty good still. Um, again, they get this from off in Australia. I think it's a company called ARK. Um, so that's awesome. And then when you're not using it, it locks up and out of the way, gives you plenty of space. And then, the box on the tongue is kind of the brains of the operation. So if we open this up, which it is lockable, this is where the battery and electronics are. So my battery set up on the teardrop, I have tandem deep cycle batteries that are gonna power pretty much everything. Lights, propane heater. So these are actually from Full River, which is the sister company to Full Throttle. Um, same batteries I'd run in my 80, and they are DC 250 six volt batteries. So they're ran in tandem, um, which essentially gives you 250 volts, 12 volt power. And that powers the heart of the, the trailer itself. So you also have a Renogy solar controller mounted to the inside of the tongue box. You can hook this up to your phone, look at your usage, look at your wattage. Um, there's some additional fuses for other stuff going on with the trailer. So it's kind of nice, everything's right here. You can monitor it all. Um, when the trailer's in storage, I can just disconnect the negative. That way it's not drawing. And then on the outside, you have a place to hook up additional solar power to charge the batteries if you want to, or just a 12 volt. So that's pretty much what's going on up front. There's plenty of room to store chairs, fire pits. I have a shovel and some chairs in here right now, but we did have a fire pit in here um, last spring that worked great. So another thing to note that I forgot to tell you guys is when you actually have this plugged into your pin connector, it does trickle charge your battery. So we went on a long road trip to pick the trailer up in Oregon and this alone will keep your batteries topped off to maximum voltage, which is really nice. It's nothing crazy, but the fact that it has that functionality to actually trickle charge the batteries when it's hooked up is really convenient. So walking around the outside of the trailer, one thing to note is you do have a box steel frame, so it's really durable. 
Um, the fenders themselves are single piece aluminum construction. They have an integrated step plate on the side, which is nice. You can step right on them and access your awning or whatever you might have on your roof. Um, I have this secured in case I want to run a jerry can or water, whatever it may be, and it is lockable. You can do a couple different things. They offer different options as far as what you want to hard mount to the outside. Um, shore power hookup is on driver's side right here. So there are a couple 110s, and if you want those functional, you will have to be hooked up to shore power. But it's just nice to have that option, which tops off your battery. So if you have the ability to plug in at a campsite or something, it's pretty easy to access. Um, I don't know why I said access, access. It's pretty easy to access. <laughs> Moving around the outside, we have a power tank propane mount and then hard mounted propane tank. This has a couple different functions. Its main function is underneath. It's actually hard plumbed into the trailer and I have a Propex propane heater that spits out a ton of hot air into the cabin. So that is awesome. I've used it on some really cold nights. Keeps it like 72 degrees in there, nice and toasty. Um, I will bring a spare propane when we're out camping. And then this is also lockable. It's secondary function, which we can dig into a little bit more when I show you guys the galley but you have an additional propane hookup right down here that pulls from this same tank and that's where you can hook up the camp chef. Um, and there's just an extension cord, you run it around, plug it in and you're off to cooking without even having to mess with the propane or removing it, which is awesome. You'll notice there's stands in each corner. So if you're gonna pull away from the trailer for a long period of time and don't want it rolling around, you can throw some chucks down, flip these, get the trailer off up its axles. So on the back, there's a hard mounted solar panel but you can see there's tabs here to actually remove it. It's locked up right now, but you can just disconnect it if you want to. Pull it off, it has built-in legs, and position it wherever you need. You can plug it in here and it will actually charge the battery, or you saw that additional solar plug-in up front on the tongue. So if you wanted to, you could run a few different ones. You could get like 250 watts of solar going into your battery at a campsite or something if you're gonna be there for an extended period of time. LED lights, and then I'll open up the galley for you guys to take a look at because that's my favorite part of the trailer. All right, so we got the galley open. As you can see, ton of custom cabinets. I have a fridge back here. I'll break down what Teardrops NW put in the back of my trailer. They have a lot of options for this, so get on their website and look at what they offer. But I have voltage controls right here and then some additional lighting. So I'll just turn that on. Um, you can actually see the voltage of the current state of your battery right here and turn that on and off if you want to. So at camp, you can monitor it just to make sure if you're cooking or doing other things or running your heater, you're not gonna draw your battery down too much. Um, with the DC batteries, you can draw it down to you know, 11, 11.3 and shouldn't be a big issue. But when plugged into shore power, you'll see that jump up to like 13.7. Um, as far as all the cabinets, it's really just storage. I have a lot of toiletry stuff in here. Um, this, you actually have access to your main fuse panels. So if you were to pop a breaker or something with your heater, that's where you go to access it. There is a pass through into the cabin and the trailer itself right here, which is kind of nice. So if my kids are inside watching iPad or whatever and getting rowdy, I can chuck something at them or yell at them. Um, but it's cool, people can hand stuff in and out if they're in the trailer. So it is cool they build that in. Um, and then just more additional storage. You'll notice that there's pressure, pressure latches on these, so they actually click in place. So they're not gonna be rattling around when you're driving. And then the pullout drawers are lockable. So that is a cool feature. They've built this with the intention that you're gonna go on some rough terrain and they don't want your drawers bashing into the the hatch or just rattling around. Um, you can tell the fridge power is on right now. It pulls out all the way. I can completely remove that and just mix it whatever we're cooking. And then I'll show you guys the stove setup, which I was just talking about with the propane. So this is a pretty sweet setup with the cooktop surface and then the camp chef. So there's an extended gas line you can just grab from underneath and then it plugs right into that additional propane hookup. Turn the propane on. This is 
electric start, starts right up and you're off to cooking. Um, I do have a windscreen underneath for this too, so if it is crazy windy, it won't affect your ability to cook food. But it's nice to have this surface to cut and prep food on, cook right here, never have to mess with getting a tank out, starting a fire or anything like that. It's just super convenient. My favorite feature about the back is this custom sink setup that Ozzy built. It's tucked right next to the fridge. It doesn't use a ton of space by any means. And then they have this pop out dish tray that drops right in there. And then some of you guys might have seen this Dometic setup, but Dometic came out with these battery powered faucets, which are pretty sweet. And then both of these, I don't think they're quite five gallons. They might be a little bit less than that, but you can fill them with fresh water before you go camping. Hook your hose line up to the back of the faucet. And then these actually just clip in just like that. And then it's battery powered. The true test will be if I still have water in there from the last time we camped. All right, and then walking around the passenger side of the trailer, there's not as much going on. They do give you room to mount a full size spare. So these are a little bit bigger than the standard 33. It mounts up, it's pretty tight, but mounts up just fine. Another thing to note, I guess, about the trailer is it does use Timbrin's axle-less trailer suspension. I run Timbrin stuff on a lot of my different vehicles and this trailer suspension is awesome. It can move independently of one another because there's no axle going across the underside of the trailer. There's not really anything to get hung up on. So you get independent travel on each side. It makes for a really smooth ride off-road, but you don't have to really worry about losing clearance, which is nice. And there's not much to see, but Teardrops NW trailers are trailer brake compatible, so they have their own brakes. Um, I run a Red Arc trailer brake controller, or have been, and it's been awesome. This thing, you can tell it brakes behind your vehicle really nicely. It pulls very smoothly. So the fact that they include that when these things can get, you know, a little bit over 2,000 pounds when they're fully loaded um, is really nice. It just makes for a much more enjoyable road trip when you're towing it. All right, so before we go on the inside, they do include LED lighting around the outside of the trailer. These ones are just push on and off, but light up for the most part the entire side. So good scene lighting at camp if you do have to get out of the trailer at night. Both doors are lockable, so that's nice. They both do have their own windows. The screen can come up and down to vent to get more airflow in here at night. All right, so we're looking at the inside of the cabin of the trailer right now. Bed space wise, I'd say, I don't know the exact dimensions, but it's pretty comparable to like a wider full size, like between a full size and a queen. So <laughs> we've slept, me and my wife and three kids in here before. It was tight, but you can sleep two adults and a kid in here very comfortably. Um, we're kicking the kids up to the rooftop tent now, which is why that's up here. But as far as the cabinetry and the build out options for the inside of these trailers, they're very functional. It's awesome experience to camp in here. Um, we put the head of the bed over here so you can see above both people's heads, you have a net to hold your phone. You have USB to charge your devices, whether that's a phone or an iPad. Each person has their own lighting and this lighting is actually dimmable. So if you just hold your finger on there, it can dim down if one person wants to read and the other doesn't. You have some general overhead storage above each person and then an overhead cabinet right there as well. Um, the other thing I usually store up here is the vent remote. So above the head, you'll actually see a vent that does come with its own remote. You can turn that on and it'll open up. On the remote, you have different temperature settings um, and it's based off of the speed of the fan and the temperature that the fan's trying to regulate. So I'll turn it off because it's kind of loud, but if you set it to 75 degrees, it's gonna open and close itself to try to maintain that cabin temperature, which is really awesome. Um, depending on if it's humid outside or whatever, it's just a nice tool to have getting consistent airflow in here without having to worry about cracking windows a ton at night. I'm sure if you guys have camped before, you know condensation can be a problem. So the fact that that's included in the trailer has been huge. Um, and then if you look at the foot, you have a whole nother built out section with very large storage. So this is where I store a lot of our bedding, clothes for the morning if we want to put those here. Um, you have a nice shelf, so if you want to store shoes up here or throw some different stuff, it's very deep storage that goes all the way back to the galley. 
And then this is a good surface for like to throw an iPad up if you want to watch a show at night. Um, you do have regular plugins up here if you're plugged into shore power. So I'm sure if some people wanted to, you could actually find a way to mount a real TV over here if you're gonna spend more time at like actual campgrounds. And then the other thing that's hard mounted inside here is the control for the Propex propane heater. So if you turn that on, you can regulate temperature of the heater itself. Um, the vent for the heater is right down by your feet. So you'll actually get warm air blowing on your feet all night, which is awesome and set it at, you know, 72 degrees or wherever you want it. And it'll kind of maintain that temperature. All right. So you can see it set at 73 right now. I'm getting an air message because the propane is not actually on, so it can't actually heat, but it will try to maintain that temperature and it'll kick itself on and off all night. The power usage is very minimal. So I think it only uses like two Watts an hour or something crazy. And that's if it's consistently running. So propane heaters aren't as common, but these Propex systems are great and very efficient. Um, we camped four nights in a row coming back from Oregon in really cold temperatures. And I still have plenty of propane left in that like little 11 pound tank out there. So it's been awesome. And then you do have some additional 12 volt over here to plug in whatever you might want. But I can't say enough how huge it's been glamping with a, a heated cabin like it's it's just so nice especially with little kids when they're not complaining about being miserable the whole time so if you're looking at a trailer like this i'd say just pony up and go with some kind of heating system even if it's not propane um, but the ones that teardrop nw puts in it works great i haven't had any issues with it one other thing they do hard mount up here for you is a carbon monoxide alarm i know a lot of people get kind of sketched out about propane pumping into the cab but it does have a vent so it vents itself and then you have that alarm just for peace of mind too. So if there is a problem and it's not circulating like it needs to, if levels get to an unsafe amount, you'll, you'll wake up, you'll know. So I'm gonna throw this bedding out of the way really quick just to show you guys how thick these mattresses are too. So I think it's six, six to eight inches. Um, it's contoured to lock itself into the shape of the teardrop. So it doesn't slide around on you or anything, but it's super comfortable. I know a lot of people are used to sleeping on like a two inch tent mattress or something and you get pressure points with that this feels like a normal bed you might find at home so it's been great um, i'm excited to get out more this summer with the family and, and spend some more nights camping and yeah that's pretty much it for the inside all right well that's a little bit about the trailer i'm just going to talk a little bit about pulling one of these trailers with a uh, kind of mid-sized vehicle so forerunner is kind of a mid-sized suv uh, similar to kind of a tacoma i know Forerunners have a slightly lower towing capacity than Tacoma's, but honestly, I don't think it's too much of a difference. Uh, with the Forerunner, right now it's sitting on a three and a half inch lift and 35s. I am re-geared to 488s and I don't have a front big brake kit of any kind. I'm actually running AutoZone front brakes. I think they're Duralast Gold, so nothing fancy. And uh, pulling this through the Black Hills has been Pretty decent. Uh, one thing I've noticed with pulling around 2,000 pounds like this is uh, I can't really get above 70, 75 miles per hour. Um, and especially with a headwind, it's pretty tough to keep a 70 mile per hour speed. Uh, but overall, the mannerisms of the vehicle on the road are pretty good. Uh, going up and down hills is really no problem. I just have to downshift. I can still maintain at least probably 50 miles per hour. Going up pretty steep inclines, I don't know if you'd say like a Oh, that may be a 4% grade. Um, but yeah, overall, these vehicles are still quite capable. I'd probably go for a big brake kit if I was to actually pull this while wheeling in some fashion. Um, and roughly speaking, uh, I pulled a trailer out here to the Black Hills with dirt bikes. You maybe saw that on social media. And I was getting around 12 miles per gallon going 70 to 75 uh, with the Forerunner and with the Rome cases up on top and with you know my wheels and everything. Uh, so it's definitely not going to be horrible gas mileage uh, if you're keeping it kind of at the 70 mile per hour mark. One thing I will note is once I started getting a headwind that dropped really fast, I was starting to get like eight miles per gallon. So some things I'd maybe recommend if you wanna pull something like this with a forerunner is you probably are gonna want a long range America tank so you're not stopping every hour or two for gas. Uh, that's probably just gonna be really annoying for any passengers. And also could be a problem if you're in between gas stations in some of the West United States, you know, where there's just less gas stations. 
Another thing you probably want, like I said, is a big brake kit or at least some sort of brake upgrade so that if you're going up or down, any sort of sketchy inclines or declines, you have that. Uh, but overall, I don't feel like the Forerunner is not capable of doing this. Um, so yeah, it's cool. It's a cool little camper and it's something that maybe I'd consider, uh, especially when, you know, my wife and I consider having kids and those sorts of things. If you have a family, it seems like a really nice setup. And if you're someone who daily drives your Forerunner, maybe to and from work, maybe you've got one or two kids. So, you know, a vehicle with a second row is really all you've got and really all you want and need to spend money on. Um, a camper like this might be a nice way to expand the space of the Forerunner because right now, if you had a family of four, you know, camping in a Forerunner can be pretty tight. You could maybe do it with sleeping two inside and two in a tent, but honestly, this might have the perfect amount of expandability so that you can haul all of your gear with you. You can haul four passengers and uh, still be comfortable and then go park this thing and take your vehicle on adventures, whether you're trying to go hiking, snowboarding, wheel a trail, whatever it may be. So those are kind of my thoughts and I just wanted to share that since uh, Wes and I decided to kind of trek out here to show off his little off-road camper. All right guys, well thanks for checking out the trailer. Um, appreciate Zach for wanting to show you guys what it's like. This is my first time owning an off-road trailer and so far the experience has been great. So if you guys have more questions that I maybe didn't answer or want to check them out yourselves, Zach will link their social, Teardrops NW below, or their website, I believe, is teardropsnw.com. So Ozzy's the main guy over there. Their whole team's awesome. See so if you have any questions, either shoot me a message or reach out to those guys directly, and they'll take care of you. Yeah, so uh, Wes's vehicle was in the shop today, so he just kind of figured, yeah, we'll hook up the 4Runner, and I'll kind of see what it's like to pull an off-road trailer. And uh, so far, it was, it was pretty good. It wasn't too bad. So uh, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all your guys' support. Uh, if you got any questions about this sort of content, you know, feel free to comment them down below. Uh, if you want to see more off-road trailer content like this, a lot of people I know and just generally on social media, it seems like a lot of people are getting these. So if this is something you're kind of looking into or you want to see a DIY build like this, you know, comment all that stuff down below. It gives me some ideas for maybe future content. All right. Thanks so much. I'll catch you all in the next video. And then if... If you want, just make sure you check out Zach's affiliate links for your off-road Crocs. <laughs> That's right, Croc life. <laughs> <laughs> you better put that in there. <laughs> Some of you may be catching videos, but I, uh, I wear Crocs all the time, and I wear Crocs doing like mechanical <coughs> work on the, uh, on the Forerunner, and I, I wear Crocs like chopping wood. So, yeah, they're kind of my overall universal shoe. <laughs> Put them in four-wheel drive, though. <laughs> That's true. They are typically in two-wheel drive. <laughs> it's the tradesman croc. Uh.